Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones. Going to continue with answering common questions that everybody has. And this one is, are there or is there a waterproof spray foam? This is a very valid and important question because there's two predominant products on the market, open and closed cell, that behave completely differently. And we've got to take a look at that because not everybody understands how they're going to behave. Before I get into it, I want to say thank you to everybody that has subscribed, checked out the channel, given us a thumbs up. Appreciate having you. More content is coming out. I'm going to release a lot more videos on popular subjects and topics to get your spray foam IQ up. Remember, check out the playlists. There's probably something there that you haven't seen. Okay, on to the question. Yes, the answer is yes. You can have a waterproof spray foam but you have to be very specific about what you're doing and what product you're going to be receiving so do not go into this willy-nilly uh, that anything will be just fine so let's specifically look at the two types of spray foams that we have out on the market open cell foam is very popular especially in the United States but it it's very popular in Canada it has a very specific water absorption rate and we're going to go to its technical data here so just scrolling down here into the technical properties of open cell uh, half a pound per cubic foot spray foam insulation and you'll see here that the water absorption is 74 percent by volume now that is that's huge that means it's going to soak up an enormous amount of water so it cannot get wet Likewise, look at the water vapor permeance. Uh, 1,449 nanograms. Now, in Canada, to be a vapor barrier, you need to be 60 nanograms. This is 1,449 or 25 perms. You understand that one perm or less is a vapor barrier. So this is 25 times over uh, what a vapor barrier needs to be. But quantify it, it's for a thickness of two inches only, 50 millimeters, two inches, of uh, open cell foam, no skins. So they shave the top skin, any bottom skin, and you just have a core uh, foam that is open on all sides. The cell structure is open. So it's, it's in its most permeable uh, ability to absorb water. That's the testing criteria, all right? So in that, it has no ability at all to be a vapor barrier or to it will it will absorb water so this should not be used in subgrade situations uh, people are going to be saying can I put it in my basement or can I put it outside of my building if I open it up my answer to that is no like if you're gonna rip off siding and get open cell foam in and then it rains a day or two after you've had it installed I mean, you haven't closed it up yet, you're going to have problems. The foam insulation is going to be wet and you're going to have to let it dry out. So do not put it in a situation where it can get easily rained on or get damp. When you're dealing with uh, subgrade in your basement in a crawl space, if it's going to be coming in contact with moisture of any kind through the walls or what have you, or you have high moisture content in the soil, do not be using open cell foam insulation for that. Now some might say, well, can't we just spray it to poly? Can I put poly up against the concrete? They do that with bat and poly. The problem was with bat and poly is you don't have a, a product that adheres. It's either laying on the floor or it's laying in up against the wall. It's laying in the su uh, studs and it's not designed to be adhered and staying in place, whereas foam insulation is. So if you put it to poly, you've got a huge chance of it cupping, lifting, twisting, doing all sorts of funky things and creating voids that you never thought you were gonna have. So don't get into open cell foam insulation for subgrade or any situation where you're going to be wet. There's just a simple way to solve this, and that is let's switch to closed cell spray foam, and we're gonna take a look at that for comparison. Now, one of the things that I am going to be doing will be a uh, companion video to this one. So watch, it'll be coming out here very shortly on, we're going to specifically go over vapor barriers and the use of spray foam insulation. When do we use them? When do we not? What type of vapor barriers should we be having? Because that is a huge follow-up question to what we're talking about here right now. Let's look at closed cell. So this is the wall tight uh, eco or just wall tight V3. 
and let's check out the water absorption of this product. So we scroll down to the physical properties and here we have a open cell content of 6%. That's not so bad, but the real interesting number is water absorption. So 0.6 of a percent by volume. So remember the open cell foam was 75% uh, by volume and this one is 0.6 then our water vapor permeance is 41 nanograms again 60 nanograms is what is required to be one perm or 0.68 perm so you're under one perm at the 50 millimeter two inch sample with no skins no top skin no bottom skin just raw cellular core uh, density is tested so that means that the closed cell foam is exactly what we want to be using when we're going to be coming in contact with wet and damp situations we have sprayed an enormous amount of subgrade with closed cell foam I've done uh, water piping um, for a cattle operation that was in ground uh, all of the piping needed to be kept warm and so it was wrapped in spray foam insulation by us uh, we've done a lot of outside of foundations, of parkades, of uh, floors. I've got a specific video on that that you can watch for in-ground, and I'll provide the link here. But if you are going to be getting uh, foam insulation close cell on your roof or what have you, it's always going to be, like externally on a roof, it's always going to be UV protected, and that's because we, we don't want the sunlight breaking it down and damaging it. Now, if you've got the outside of your structure, commercial building, or maybe you have a house and you've gutted the outside of the siding off and you want to put the spray foam on the outside, the closed cell is, is the product to do it. It's going to turn a color in the sunlight. The rain isn't going to hurt it, but the sunlight's going to turn it a color. And all that is, is it's just the, uh, the ultraviolet attacking the pigments that are in the foam. The foam is not UV stabilized, so it's going to change the hue. It's going to change the color. And you've got up to six months before it starts to degradate the external quarter of an inch of foam. So all of our suppliers say it can be left exposed to the elements, wind and rain, uh, for up to six months before you're starting to see any negative effects. So if you're going to be doing the external of a roof if you're going to be doing the external of your walls or outside of a foundation know that you're not on a huge time limit to get it sprayed and then covered although you would I don't see why you would want to just leave it and get it ruined uh, if we are going to be immersing the spray foam insulation into a high water table area either we're in a high saturation point in a yard or in a swamp or high water table somewhere maybe you won't even want to use this for dock flotation boat flotation then it makes sense with your closed self spray foam to go with a secondary coating over top of it so that it's absolutely rated to zero water absorption and that way in 10 years time five years time there's no chance of it becoming waterlogged or having issues so it's a very good product and a lot of people will follow up and ask if I'm getting this in my basement internally, will it stop the water from coming in? Very common question that I get. And my answer to that is, is yes. Like it'll, it'll control the water movement to where we know water is coming in. So if you have cracks in the walls, fractures, fissures, snap ties, whatever the penetrations are that the water's coming through, as long as it's dry when the spray foam is installed, it's going to be a cork in the bottle so the water can come through the foundation, through the cinder block, through whatever's going on. When it hits the spray foam, it's going to be terminated and stopped. Now, your waterproofing always needs to be to the outside of a structure. I think that just needs to be said because somebody will lay a comment if I don't say it. Uh, but in situations where you have already done your waterproofing to the outside and you're trying to get some additional waterproofing layer on the inside, yes, the closed cell foam subgrade is going to work it will cause the water if you're in a high table area to move to a totally different location I've seen it where it was coming in through the walls stopped it coming through the wall now it was coming through the floor but that the physics of what is going on is proper the spray foam is stopping it so yes it's going to provide adhesion it's going to seal it and no the water is not going to be able to create enough hydrostatic force coming through the crack to disbond properly installed closed cell two pound density foam it's not going to be able to despond it and push it off the wall 
and then flow laterally behind it and start creating like a quarter of an inch deep water between your spray foam and your concrete. That's not going to happen, provided your installer did what he was supposed to do and installed the foam when it was dry and it, it went on properly and had the proper adhesion. So you're going to be fine. So yes, the spray foam does have waterproofing properties, but if you're going to be putting it at a high saturation point, make sure you have additional protection and make sure you're not using open cell foam in subgrade situations or situations where it's going to be getting wet or repeatedly wetted. Now, a closing comment to that, if you've stayed this far in the video, is I had a situation once where a pipe broke. Uh, there was open cell foam. Uh, it got everything wet, including the spray foam. Very wet. It was soaked, actually. And uh, they just dried it out. They, uh, they put fans. The remediation company, the disaster cleanup company, came in. They cleaned it all up, and it was no big deal. Once it dried out, it wicked. It wicked the moisture through due to the open cell content. Uh, the moisture came through, wicked out, and eventually it dried out, and none of that, that foam insulation needed to be removed. So open cell foam is not some sort of a, a horrible product that if it did ever get wet, you're, you're horribly, irreversibly uh, damaged. You just have to make sure you have the right tool for the right job, and that's what this whole channel and this video is about, is to, to build the explanation so you can understand. So thank you for staying this far in the video. We're going to have more coming out. Watch for that uh, vapor barrier video where we'll go over exactly what you should be doing with what products and what the payoff and benefits and uh, negatives are going to be. And we'll catch you on the next one. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you.